Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about stuff. Uh, I think this is a very popular topic right now. I think it's because it's one of the weirdest and most controversial ones that we currently have floating through our ecosystem. It's about the idea of the end of cycles. And I know that it makes a lot of people, I want to say, a little bit uncomfortable uh, just because we are used to cycles. We're used to the idea of knowing when and how Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market are going to react. And I think the idea of the end of that or the seeming end of that has a lot of people quite shaky right now. For those of you who weren't here, this was, I want to say about a good month and a half or maybe even two months ago. After we got the creation of the spot Bitcoin ETFs within the United States, a lot of the discussion ran around how much Bitcoin so quickly was being accumulated by these companies. Logically, makes sense. Uh, we can't hear that someone's accumulating 15, 25, 30,000 Bitcoin in a two or three day period and not be like, oh my gosh, what's going on over there? The problem is, problem is that we see the movements of these companies reacting a lot quicker than we've seen other companies do in other previous cycles. So we've known that there are other institutions who've been in the space, maybe other banks, maybe other countries. But whenever there was a price dip, uh, they tended to always last quite long. If you haven't been here for a while, if you re back new to the market or new here and or if you've been here, before, like, I mean, if you've been with me consistently through the years, you'll know that when we have a dip, like a lot of the news especially becomes like, oh, no, we're in the dip period. And then it becomes this idea of like an accumulation period as well, wherein because prices are down, no one wants to buy. The, the old term used to be constantly, nobody wants to catch a falling knife. Like that was always in the cryptocurrency news and the idea was, well, if Bitcoin's 13,000, it might go down to 11,000. If it goes down to 11, it might go down to nine. If it goes to nine, it goes to seven. You get the generalized idea. No one wanted to be the person who bought Bitcoin at 13 or 14,000 if it then dips down to 10,000 in, in a couple of days. And then from there, we usually would actually see that the price would maintain this really weird sideways period. Three weeks maybe four weeks, maybe even a bit longer sometimes. We've had periods of I'm like entire summers where it's just like three months goes by and we've maybe moved up by two or three percent in either direction. And everyone's like, okay, it's an accumulation period. It's not really as hyped up anymore because the price isn't jumping up and down. So therefore, there's no news. Bitcoin went up by 18% today. Bitcoin went down by 24% getting outside interest uh, from the market or even people who are within the market. The idea of the end of cycles uh, comes from the amount of people who are getting into the market. I know we've been talking about this as well before, but now like, really understand the actual numbers. When you talk about, I'm going to do a quick roundup. When you talk about the actual amount of Bitcoin that there ever will be, the amount that are lost, the amount that we currently have, the 99% uh, being mined over the course of the next decade, the amount of people who are accumulating right now in an effort to try and get as much as they can before the halving and even more so after this halving and then also before the next halving that comes after this one where literally just dust is coming out of the machine. It's very significant and it becomes this constant conversation that we usually have to have because I keep seeing people forgetting about it on Twitter. It's the idea of the 21 million Bitcoin. People keep treating Bitcoin as, as if it's like an infinite object that there's always going to be more of. That they're, they're, you know, we hear the news and I've been seeing the news and I've brought you the news before that a lot of times, I, I think one time we had news that there were around, was it 1.4 million Bitcoin left on exchanges. And I think when people hear that, they go, well, you know, that's going to take forever to slowly dwindle. And then you hear about these companies, BlackRock constantly, who are buying hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin and you realize that it's not going to actually take them that long to do so. The dips that we've experienced um, are quite normal. Recently, there's always a dip, always a dip after a brand new all-time high. It's always the same. We go into price discovery mode. We literally are seeing how high we're going to go. At some point, people kind of freak out. They start selling. The price dips a little bit. But normally, we would see these dips last for about four or five times as long. What we're noticing now is that these coins are immediately scooped up by whomever might actually be buying. And this is the idea of the end of a cycle. 
if it's just me, you, and a hundred other people in a room, and we see that there's some Bitcoin left on the table, and the price is going down, we go, okay, you know, we're like kind of not playing chicken, but we want to see like who's going to end up buying first. Okay, I'll also take some that kind of thing. We're now in a room with like nine thousand other people, and I'm picturing them taller for some reason. I, I don't know why, but if they see that we're not buying, they buy up immediately. So we also have to start to panic as well. Not This is not saying financial advice. It's more so one would have to panic if you realize that there's a dip and it's not going to last for three months. It lasts for three and a half days because the institutions are then also buying it up. I hope I'm making myself clear. I, I feel like I'm sometimes just like throwing a whole bunch of words at the camera and hoping that someone like latches on to one of them. What is left is not a lot. We're used to a system where we know for two years consistently prices will go down. We can take our time buying. No one's going to be interested in it. But if you know that BlackRock is going to buy any dip, you as Fidelity have to also make sure that you buy that dip. If you see the Fidelity is buying the dip, Grayscale, you also have to buy the dip. If Grayscale is buying the dip, MicroStrategy has to buy the dip. If MicroStrategy is buying the dip, all the other countries also have to start. It's, it's this kind of thing, but it becomes this very quick chain that ends up spiraling where any dip that would happen is then short-lived. Because these other institutions are finally in this space. It's not just us looking at the crumbs on the table. It's also the institutions who have vacuum cleaners who are trying to get all of it before we can realize what's currently taking place. So Coinbase um, released a new, I don't even know what this is. is. Is the word for it somewhere? Ah, they call it their weekly market commentary. Very bougie where they said that they believe that Bitcoin dips are probably going to be more aggressively bought compared to previous cycles, even as volatility persists during price discovery without having to go through the entirety of the article and all the other things that they're talking about. They said that the ETFs have kind of opened the floodgates, if you will, for a brand new way, brand new way, for people to be able to buy Bitcoin. A lot of people want to buy a securitized version of Bitcoin. And therefore, they're going strictly through the ETFs, but we're also seeing other institutions and companies who are also trying to go to people who are mining the Bitcoin or going directly to Coinbase or all these other crypto exchanges to even buy through them. The idea of the dips is that they're going to start fading. And this is where, so when you hear these people and you've heard in the other videos, if you've been paying attention for the last like 10 videos and you see these people are talking about the idea of Bitcoin's price going to half a million and to a million and then plus and plus and plus and to 5 million, so on and so forth. This also plays into it as well. It's the idea that the dips are only there. Now, this is the weird part. The dips are happening because the institutions know that they can terrify people. And this, I mean, this is for every single market. What you do is you make sure that you sell or you initiate something that causes the price to fall down. Normal people who've gotten into the market, they will begin to sell out of, out of pure fear. We spoke about that a couple of um, maybe weeks ago as well. I was telling you I have a friend, uh, his parents were getting into the market and the, the price fell by 4% one day. His father was texting him, should I sell? Am I going to sell right now? Do I have to sell? What's happening? Because he was terrified. A lot of this is a, this is a brand new market for a lot of people. So this will continue. I told you before, Bitcoin is for everyone on the planet, but it's no longer for us. And these institutions know that because if we get to the point and I'm talking about parity here, these people will be dynastically wealthy. And I mean, many of them, let's be completely honest, already are. But the issue is that they know exactly how to move through markets to kind of terrify other people to get them out of it. And it's something as simple as a 4% drop in price. I've been in this market for a while. I've been doing the channel for a while. I've had the other channel for a while. And what we're seeing is completely unorthodox. Um, even when it comes to the having, you'll see as well, prices tend to dip as well. People always try to do this uh, sell the news kind of thing, not really realizing exactly what's going on. And that usually tends to last for a while as well. But we're in this brand, we're in a brand new space where we are having discussions about their potentially based off of wallet addresses and, you know, new addresses every single day that there is like 100 million people who are into Bitcoin. We're not at half a billion people yet. We're not at, at a billion people. We're not at 3.5 billion people who are in the Bitcoin market. And this is already the kind of movement that we're seeing within the space daily. 
What happens when we get to half a billion people who are in this market? There will be no more dips. Even now, I have a lot of friends who buy like nearly exclusively on dips. And it also helps to raise the price as well because they end up seeing that like, well, the price went down. It won't last that like it won't be there for long. Now, imagine if you had the backing of hundreds of millions of dollars, if you had 14 billion dollars. OK, tool. throw it into the market right now. The dip is completely gone. So one of the craziest things that we're going to have to, I think, finally reckon with at some point is when we actually get to the middle of 2025, towards the end of 2025, which would historically be the time that the bull run would end, the amount of new people in the space are going to have a, a taste for Bitcoin and they're going to want more. And I'm fascinated to see what market activity is going to look like in a world where there's hundreds of millions of people who are trying to buy the exact same thing that there's not a lot of on the market anymore. Yeah, I thought it was fascinating. I, I like a lot of things like this because I've seen that people tend to just focus on Bitcoin's price, how high Bitcoin's price is. If Bitcoin's down, people tend to lose interest. And I'm like, you're, you're, you're missing the bigger picture. You're, you're not understanding that there's not a lot left. It's being bought up. The having is going to catalyze this gigantic rocket into the sky and tons of people are going to start moving into the market to buy essentially what you don't. They're, you know, the gold rush. Everyone's trying to get as much as they possibly can. And it's, gonna, it's going to be one of those things where in 10 years you will look back and you go, ah, of course it was going to go there. But I, I noticed this very blasé attitude from a lot of people, no matter what kind of news we get, no matter how many times we hear that these people are buying up all the coins, there's not a lot of coins left, people are desperate to try and get as much Bitcoin as possible. Many people within this space, they go, hmm, oh, well, we'll see what happens with the price. And it's like, that's not the most important thing. It's the level of adoption and how little that there actually is on the market. Yeah. We'll see what happens, and I'm interested to see what the next dips in price are going to look like because I know that they won't last two or three months like they've done before. Yeah, I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and supporting, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.